Well, honestly, I almost called this video decluttering for messy people because I think most of the decluttering videos out there are made by organized people for organized people. So I'm really excited today to share some of my favorite decluttering tips that work for everyone, messy and organized people alike. Well, it's so good to see you today. I hope you're doing well, and I'm excited to go back to the basics of decluttering. So I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. Welcome to any new friends we have from our house tour video. And I'm really excited to kind of go back to these basics because I think it's gonna re-energize you towards simplifying your house and make it a lot easier as well. And so if you watched our video on Sunday, my twin sister Diana outed me that yes, I am a messy person, and I think that's why minimalism has been so great for our family because what I found is that for us, messy people, that's us over here, that minimalism is an incredible tool because we just need less stuff to manage and we do really well with that. On the other hand, we have our friends who are very organized. They like to organize. It's like my mom who volunteers to help organize her friend's house. I didn't, like, I'm just like who, do, like, who does that? I don't understand these people. But a lot of times, these people over here, the ones that enjoy organizing, they're the ones that make the organizing videos. And us over here, we're trying to fit ourselves into their systems, and it doesn't work all of the time. And so if you've watched other decluttering videos, you've tried other methods, but they haven't worked, I hope that you'll hang out with me because there's a good chance you're over here and these systems don't work for you, or you are one of these people, but you've just you've just acquired too much stuff so you don't get to enjoy that satisfaction of organizing because it's impossible to organize when you just have too much stuff. All right, so basic number one when it comes to decluttering, it is so important to understand why we're doing this. There's research now that shows that when we live in a cluttered house, when there's lots of stuff around us all of the time, we don't ever get to fully relax or let our guard down. We have elevated cortisol levels. Those are the stress hormones. Those are ones that make us gain weight. They also cause us to just wanna escape from things. And so how do we do that? Well, sometimes by buying more stuff, which is counterproductive, but other times by this. Do you ever do this? Insert phone and face, right? We just want to escape. That's not how we want our house to be, right? A place that makes us want to escape. It's supposed to be a haven, a place that we get to just come home to and escape the rest of the world, not need to escape from. So when we understand this, when we understand the full weight of our stuff and the impact that it's not only having on us and our family, that maybe it is some of that underlying agitation that we feel a lot of the time or anxiety it could be being caused by our stuff. And that is so silly, right? That's not what any of us would want. So I do think this is a really important endeavor. It's worth making time for and it's worth learning more about until you find the system that works for you. Okay, so let's go on to step number two. How did our house get like this in the first place? Because of marketing, right? Because everywhere we turn. Like I'm just minding my own business on Facebook, wanting to see pictures from a girl at church who got married the other weekend. I wanted to see her wedding dress, right? And so I'm just on there minding my own business. And what are there? Ads, 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 buy this, buy this, buy, buy, buy. Everywhere we look, someone is trying to get us to buy something. And when we're kind of in this state of feeling kind of stressed out, not always feeling super in control of our life, it's really easy to give in those temptations. And yes, the stuff in our house, the inventory in our house creeps up and up and up and it happens. It happens to all of us. Okay, so that's how we got here. We all do it. It happens to all of us. We don't have to feel guilty about it. We don't have to feel shameful about it. We just need to understand what's happening and the effect that it's having on our family so that we can get back to what it is we want our house to feel like. All right, so third thing, because why you're here is to declutter, right? Get to the decluttering tips already. It's important to recognize what kind of season we're in. Do we have lots of time to dedicate to this right now? Or do we only have bits and pieces of time here and there? So if you have a lot of time right now, then let's go all in. Let's rip apart your whole kitchen. Let's tackle your whole wardrobe. Let's pull all of your paper clutter onto the kitchen table and go after it. I have videos on all of those things. But if you're not in that place right now, you have lots of kids activities going on, your work is really demanding, you're caring for a loved one. That is a huge time commitment and energy gain. If you're in a season right now where you don't have large amounts of time to dedicate to this process, then let's take bite-sized pieces, 15 minute chunks every day, 
is awesome because what happens is you start to build up these muscles of decluttering. If every day you go around your house with one bag for donations, one bag for garbage, and you go for 15 minutes, you set the timer, your goal is to fill each bag by the end of the 15 minutes. If you do this, can you imagine? Like, can you imagine this in your head right now? If you do this for like two weeks, all these bags of like donation stuff, your garbage cans overflowing, how good you're gonna feel about yourself, how much confidence you're gonna be gaining in yourself. Okay, the next thing that is so important to realize when we're going through this process is how easy stuff is to replace. If you're watching this video, chances are you live in an area where Amazon delivers, uh, you have Walmarts and Targets or different stores like that, where we can get just about anything that we need, any time of the day that we need it. And so let's take a classic example, the bunt pan, right? So many of you have told me that you have decluttered your bunt pans. Good call, you hadn't used it in a year. You know, we'll get to all the questions that you ask yourself in just a second. You hadn't used it, you parted with it. Well, what happens then? Dawn comes along and says, I have these amazing bunt cake recipes. They are so easy, they taste so good. People are going to rave about them and ask you for the recipe. And not, this is this is actually a true fact, <laughs> and I'll link to those recipes down below because they're so good and they're so easy. Because a messy person me doesn't like to do complicated recipes, and so I'll link to those down below. But okay, so so many of you are like, I decluttered my bunt pan because you said if I if there's things in my house I haven't used in a year and if I can replace it for twenty dollars or less I should get rid of it. Now you're giving me bunt cake recipes and I don't have my bunt pan <laughs> anymore, right? So this happens very rarely, but once in a while this happens where we've gotten rid of something and we need it. Well, guess what, friends? My mom found this bunt pan for me for a quarter at a garage sale. You could call your neighbor, or worst case scenario, I'll link to my favorite bunt cake pan down below, and it's $10 or less on Amazon, and you can have it in two days. And so I bring this up because I know that none of us wanna be wasteful. We don't wanna get rid of things we've paid money for only to find out that we're gonna need it again. But honestly, friend, there are so few Bundt cake pan examples in your life. Tom and I have gotten rid of 80% of the stuff in our house, and I've said this before, there's like one pair of black pants and a cord that we later found out was for a camera, a battery charger. Two things, both $20 or less, and I haven't even replaced them because it was kind of like it would be nice to have, but we didn't actually need them. And so as you go through this process, I hope you realize that this stuff in our house, we just don't need it. It's causing us stress and it's not adding value or bringing enjoyment to our life. And so it is 100% okay for you to get rid of those items. Okay, next thing, save the difficult things, the sentimental items, the gifts for last. Like I was talking about, these are muscles, these are decluttering muscles that we are gonna build up over time. So as you continue to declutter your house, you are gonna gain confidence in yourself. Maybe you wouldn't have gotten rid of the bunt pan the first pass through your kitchen, but by the third time around, you're like, you know what, I've gotten rid of a bunch of stuff now, I don't need it, I don't miss it, and I'm loving the extra space in my kitchen. And so it's out of here, it's gone. So we gain confidence in these areas as we declutter more and more. And so we're gonna talk more about sentimental items and gifts coming up next week, but for now, if you're just getting started, leave those things for last. Tackle the easy things, clothes, kids' toys. Yes, we have a whole series on kids' toys because it seems like it should be easy, but it's not always. Kitchen things that you just know that you know that you're not using. Start with those things, and then, like I said, we'll tackle some of the more difficult topics coming up soon. All right, and then the last thing is, I do have a list of questions that can be really helpful to ask yourself as you're going through. So things like, of course, have I used it in the last year or do I plan on using it in the upcoming year? Or how about, can I replace it for $20 or less or borrow it from a friend? Is this item serving its purpose? If I have 20 coffee mugs in my kitchen cabinet, are they serving their purpose? Are they doing what they were created for? Chances are they probably aren't. Am I keeping this item out of guilt? Would I buy it again? If, if there's items in our house that we would say, oh no, I definitely would not purchase that again, why are we keeping it in our house? And I like this one. If somebody paid me for it, would I part with it? And so I have a printable with all of these questions. I'll link to that down below because this can be really helpful to have in front of you when you're actually going through the process. Because I know what it's like to watch these videos and get all excited and jazzed up and like, yeah, I'm gonna like clean out my whole house, right? And then we get hung up on certain items. So keep it with you along with your two bags, your garbage and your donation, and it might make things a lot easier. 
So I really hope that this is helpful. I do wanna encourage you that you're never gonna look back. Once you start this process, once you get your house simplified, a couple months from now, you could feel like you're living in a completely different house. It really could be that peaceful place to come home to where everyone in your family, they can just come home, they can let their guard down at the end of the day, and I think you're gonna see it's really gonna improve the quality of your relationships. So, that's my best encouragement to you. And like I said, coming up next week, we're gonna talk about sentimental items and gifts. Thursday of this week, we're gonna talk about what to do if you feel like you are just spinning your wheels, you're stuck, or you're not making any progress anymore with simplifying. I've been there, it happens a lot, so I have some encouragement for you around that. But thank you so much for watching. A thumbs up is always greatly appreciated. I love when you comment, I love hearing where you're at, the struggles you're having, the victories you're having, so definitely share that down below, and I will look forward to visiting with you again really soon.